today to do a couple things. I, I want to talk uh, about the, the difference between the politic of the U.S. Congress and the Japanese diet, and specifically the role of the speaker and how the speaker mm -hmm. sets the uh, paradigm or sets the program of, of both those, of, of the body of the, of the, especially the U.S. House of Representatives and, in a sense, the Senate itself, uh, the whole Congress. Uh, I also wanted to then talk about how that affects some of the issues before the Congress itself. Uh, we have trade issues that we need to talk about, more specifically the TPP. Uh, we have nuclear issues, uh, really focus on some of the things that are going on in Japan here, uh, namely Fukushima, but uh, how that affects the rest of, of the global uh, view of, of the nuclear industry. Uh, we have uh, issues in, in uh, Washington itself, uh, immigration if issues and uh, agricultural bills and all these things that are determined on whether the Congress can get legislation passed or if it can't and how it impacts on other things that are waiting to be done in Congress. But first of all, I, I want to say I, I had some meetings this afternoon uh, with some members of uh, the diet that I've known for a long, long time. And in the discussion, I said to them, sometimes as speaker, I was very, very uh, jealous of the ability that the power of the, of the party has in the Japanese diet. Because the, the party in, in power is also the government in power. And uh, contrary to what happens in the United States, we have a, a divided process of government. But uh, many times I found myself as Speaker of the House with a voting uh, uh, margin of less than five votes. And any time out of 435 members, and your majority was 218 members, any time that you would have five people that would get on, up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning or say something to the press before uh, when they were back in their district uh, and said that they couldn't vote for this piece of legislation or that piece of legislation, uh, you were at, a, at an impasse and you couldn't get anything done. Let's go back to the difference between the Diet and, and the House of Representatives. The Diet in the lower house certainly uh, determines who the, um, uh, the, the government will be. It de depends on, uh, de determines who the ministers of government will be, and certainly determines who the prime minister is. The prime minister, of course, is the top of the government. That's very different uh, in, in the Congress. The Congress leadership determines who the Speaker of the House will be. And the Speaker of the House, in a, in, a, in a way, even though you have a president and an executive uh, uh, department in the U.S. Congress, the Speaker of the House is responsible for the political side of the House of Representatives. So in my term of Speaker, I made a 1,000 campaign stops in the eight years I was Speaker. So you're, you're first of all, you're responsible for returning your members to Congress or getting ele new members elected so that you could be the majority. If you didn't do that, you did not have the majority and you were not in power. It may also meant raising the money to make sure that your uh, members had enough uh, money to be able that they could get their message out and they could run a political campaign. The speaker also had the control of all the, the control of all the legislation. So every piece of legislation that was moved through the house had to have two things. First of all, you had to make sure that you had the requisite number of votes, at least 218 votes, to pass that legislation. And then the speaker had the sole power to decide what, what bills moved before the Congress and what bills stayed and, and did not move before the Congress. So the speaker had a huge uh, amount of power. <laughs> A dynamic that happened in 2002 is called campaign finance reform. It passed through the Senate, uh, was uh, sponsored by Senator McCain and Senator Feingold, and it was a consequence, a political consequence of the uh, presidential election in 2000. Uh, in the state of South Carolina, the party of, of the Republican Party in South Carolina threw all its support and its money behind George W. Bush and beat McCain 
in that primary election. That primary election set the stage for the rest of that primary. And once Bush won South Carolina, he won basically the Republican nomination. Uh, I would say, in my view, Senator McCain was, was bitter, unhappy about that situation. So he wanted to change it. And he wanted to take the money and the power out of the party. Now, the party, just like the LDP or the uh, Komito or the Japanese Democratic Party, uh, basically is a homogenizing process. They find out who the best candidates are. They support those candidates. They, 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 in, the, in the case of the Japanese diet, they slate those candidates. Uh, and they support those candidates, by and large, and, and put the money in to make sure that they can get their message out. What the McCain-Feingold bill did in the U.S. Congress is take all the party money out of politics and said the state party couldn't be supported by the federal party, the federal, por uh, the, uh, the federal party couldn't support the state party. So it basically took money out, uh, effectively out of, uh, out, of the, uh, out of the political parties. When you take the money out of the political parties, the money goes someplace. And it's until the federal government, the U.S. Uh, political process, changes and actually does, again, a different type of ca uh, campaign finance reform or changes the law again, and once you have the law, it's very difficult to change it. Nobody likes to, to change the status quo, but you're going to have this situation exist. And one of the reasons I'm here this week, and I've been working with, uh, we've been very, very privileged to work with the Sasakawa Peace Foundation, is to try to improve the uh, relationship between the U.S. Congress and the Japanese diet. It's a very important uh, relationship. I've been, uh, the 20 years that I've worked in the Congress, I had a very good relationship and we had a long relationship. And if you understand and have these uh, relationships with members of Congress, uh, with the diet and a diet with the members of Congress, you carry on a dialogue and you can begin to understand what the problems of one nation are and you can start to understand a better uh, 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 working uh, cooperation. Uh, for instance, uh, let's talk today about, about some of the issues that are out there, uh, even in commerce, uh, the, the, the islands between Japan and, and China that affect North Korea, they affect Korea, they affect the Philippines, and if you go farther south, they affect Vietnam. If there is one thing, one gunboat and one fishing boat that has some kind of a conflict, it could affect the whole world trade. It could, it could affect trade routes. It could affect commerce. It could affect the, the whole balance that we have militarily. And uh, so we need to have the dialogues, not only with Japan and the United States, but with other uh, uh, Pacific uh, uh, nations to make sure that we can have abilities so that these types of conflicts don't arise. Fukushima is important. It's important to the Japanese people to see Fukushima resolved in a very satisfactory way to get it cleaned up. If not, uh, today, you know, at one time, Jap Japanese uh, depended to between 30 and 40 percent for its power supply from nuclear energy. Today, hardly any of the power so only two plants are actually running. And uh, uh, in all probability, even if the Abe government uh, makes some important decisions, that probably at the top side, not more than 15 or 20 percent of uh, Japan's power supply will ultimately come from nuclear energy. So what does that mean? It means that unless Fukushima is cleaned up satisfactorily, and it has the confidence of the Japanese people, that, J that Japan will have a huge deficit in power. Japan's a country of industry. It's an a, 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 a industry of, of uh, actually making things, of being able to be a world a merchant. And unless Jap Japan has the power and the ability to do that, uh, you, know, you need the energy to do it. If you don't have the energy to do it, you will continually see a, a lag in, in your economy. It also means that um, the issue of Fukushima is just not a Japanese issue, it's a global issue. 
It's a global issue because, for instance, in the United States, we are ready to build two or three new nuclear plants. I doubt maybe they will be, but maybe they won't be. I doubt that they, unless there's a res resolution of Fukushima, I doubt that those plants will ever get built. Why? Because there has to be a confidence that if there's a, there's a problem in nuclear energy, that the nuclear plants can be cleaned up. There can be a resolution. And it's important then that uh, we look to Japan to see how the Japanese government, and hopefully we can cooperate uh, in a world basis, and to find that type of cleanup. The third issue why Fukushima is so important is Japan has spent 30 years doing research when the United States has really kind of sat back and not done anything, but you've uh, uh, created Roka Show and uh, uh, other uh, areas to f uh, of, of, nu of nuclear research and how to do deal with spent nuclear waste and cleanup. And, uh, and really, Japan is on the forefront of selling its nuclear uh, technology around the world. And unless Fukushima can be resolved on, on, a, on a satisfactory basis, that ability to sell that technology around the world certainly is, is stymied. Uh, not many people will be new, building new uh, nuclear energy plants. <laughs>
uh, relationship also bring stability to the whole area. And uh, that needs to be done, and I think it's a very important uh, step that I hope that uh, Secretary Kerry uh, uh, pursues. Thank you.